R.O.P., a man of means, thought he had it all, a high-paying job, a loving wife, and a shiny new Audi to boot. But, all good things must come to an end, and in this case, it was a check engine light that served as the harbinger of doom. My wife cheated on me with a mechanic, so I made sure her car troubles got her fired. My wife and I have been married to each other for 10 years now, and for the most part, we've had a pretty sweet marriage. Sure. There have been the occasional big disputes, but we've never looked at human relationships as always being conflict-free. I am 41 years old now, and she is 37. We both never wanted children, which is a decision we've never regretted. I've been earning six figures for all the years. We've been married, and my wife earns in the high five figures. There's always been a lot of money to enjoy ourselves with, though we always try to be smart financially and made good investments. Because of my work, we've moved three times, from New York, where we started dating and got married, to Phoenix, and then finally to Cupertino. We've been settled in Cali for about four years now, and we probably won't move. In fact, it was when it seemed like we wouldn't be going anywhere, that I decided it'd be a good time for my wife to get a new car. I bought her a brand new Audi Q8, and it's still very stupid about it because that purchase was the catalyst for things going bad. However, it exposed my wife's true nature, and for that much, I can't help but be grateful for the way that things went. Regardless, she was ecstatic with the gift, and she was incredibly thankful to me. I think it was the second or third month that she had the car when the check engine light came on. Personally, I was frustrated because I felt like she must have been doing a poor job taking care of the vehicle. I've driven Otis and I love them, they certainly never started to complain on me so fast. Regardless, she claimed, she hadn't treated it any differently from all the other cars she had driven, which, fair point, none of them had ever been driven or maintained like crap. So, she took the vehicle back to the dealership to get it looked at. She came back after about two hours, and said that they had fixed the problem for free under the warranty. Apparently, it wasn't a big deal, and she seemed very happy about the development. I was glad to see how much joy the car, working like normal, brought her, but looking back, I now realize her happiness was probably due to something else. I think it was about a month after this that my wife scraped one of her rims against the curb while trying to park in a tight spot. I saw it as she drove into her space in the garage that evening, and she explained what had happened. However, she had taken the initiative to drive down to the dealership to try and get it replaced. I knew it would never be covered by warranty, and she confirmed that was what she was told, but then she said the mechanic from the last time was there, and he said he could get me a replacement rim for a lot cheaper. I got his number, so I could ask him about it. To be honest, I thought she could potentially get a bargain, but I warned her to talk to me first before paying the guy, as it could be a scam. The next day, she said she had spoken with the mechanic, and she'd go to his shop to get the rim replaced. I was a bit shocked that she had moved so quickly with the arrangement, especially because I wanted to make sure things were safe, but at the same time, I took it as her enthusiasm around the new car. She didn't want anything to make it look less sexy. Then it was when it was a brand new one. I didn't voice any of my concerns, because I had already made up an excuse for her. Remember that, I had no reason to doubt my lovely wife of 10 years, so off she went to the mechanic's place. She came back about 4 hours later, clearly in a very good mood. The rim had been fixed, she had done some shopping, and everything was supposedly well with the world again. I didn't think too much of the whole thing at this point. Through the next few months, my wife's car ran reliably, and there wasn't much out of the ordinary with it. However, during that time, a point came where my car's brakes were acting up. I was already driving in the city, and the last thing I wanted to do was drive across town to my trusted mechanic and potentially risk brake failure. I remember that my wife briefly mentioned the area where she had earlier met the Audi mechanic for the rim replacement, and since I was in the general district, 
I decided to give him a shot on a whim. Of course, I didn't know exactly where his shop was, so I gave my wife a quick call. Hey, hey, I said, quick one, my brakes are feeling soft, and it's got me a little worried. I'm a bit too far from my mechanic's place, and I don't want to risk it, so can you send me the address of the guy that fixed up your rim for the other time? After I said this, there was a brief silence, but I could still hear the background noise, so I knew she was still on the line. I noticed that the first few words of her first sentence came out in a stutter, and I was instantly on alert. Oh him? He's more familiar with Otis. You've got a BMW, so he might not have the expertise needed to help you out. Maybe you should risk it, and try and go over to your usual guy. She was very clearly trying to steer me away from this guy, and I really don't know whether she thought she was slick with it. Unfortunately for her, I insisted, partly because I really didn't want my brakes to fail on me, and because my suspicions were raised tenfold. She eventually sent the address to me, and I made the short drive to his shop. To be honest, it was a pretty nice shop. When I pulled in, there were just two or three guys sitting at a plastic table, playing cards. When I stepped out of the car, one of them stood up and came to greet me. He was a pretty handsome guy, but I wasn't sure if he was Jim or not, so I told him about the problem with my Beamer, and he said he'd check it out right away. Right before he walked off to get some tools, I stopped him. By any chance, do you know a certain woman who comes here with a Q8, a black one? On hearing that, I noticed that. He cracked a smile, but then he did his best to tuck it away. Ah, uh, yeah, I think that sounds familiar. She comes in every now and then. You know her? I told him that she was my wife and that she referred me. And I swear, I saw him freeze for just a second before trying to regain some composure. Oh, uh, cool. She's a good customer. She was here a week ago for a brief checkup. He shut up right away after that. At that moment, I knew something was up, because she never told me she had taken the car in, and if it was having an issue, she should have taken it to the dealership, since it was still new. I had to stop my fury from building since I was only working with suspicions as solid as I felt they might be. I needed to make sure I had solid proof before I allowed my anger to get the better of me. The worst part is that the guy couldn't have been older than 25, and he was relatively good-looking. I never thought my wife was the kind of woman who'd get smitten over a kid for a fling. It made me even matter, but again, I had to tell myself to chill out. But I think it was right at that moment, as I had to wait there, looking at the guy's mug, that I told myself I was going to get to the bottom of things. Close to an hour later, he was done with my car, and I was back on my way home, going a bit too fast. I'll admit, which was ironic, since I was worried about my brakes not too long before that. Anyway, I got back home, and I saw the Q8 parked, so my wife was home. She met me at the door, and I don't know if I was imagining it or not but she seemed shifty. She helped me with my coat and seemed to be following me around quite a bit. When she finally asked how was the visit to the mechanic, it seemed like she had been itching to ask. Of course, I knew better than to try and confirm my suspicions directly, so I just told her the mechanic was a nice kid, and he happened to know how to work with BMWs. She seemed relieved, which made me happy because I was fighting to keep my anger and suspicions locked up. All I needed to do was be patient, and patient I was, because my wife is a heavy sleeper. So, when she dozed off and I heard her light snoring, I got out of bed, and grabbed her phone from her bedside table. It had a passcode, but I knew, it since it was the same passcode she uses on everything. I had never needed to check her phone before now, so I was scared of what I was going to find. The first place I went was iMessage, but after scrolling a lot, I found nothing of note. That wasn't going to be the end of my search, though so the next place I went was Messenger, and right at the top, I saw a message from a certain gym, with the preview of the last message sent being, haha, me too. I loved it when you licked me. FR, I knew there was nothing good waiting for me behind that preview, but I had to open it. My suspicions needed to be fed, 
as painful as I knew it was going to be. You drove me crazy with your tongue last time. I loved it so much. Ha, ah, me too. I loved it when you looked me from top to bottom. I'm getting wet just thinking of it. On reading that, I felt my heart sinking in my chest. I felt cold, and I felt my hand grip the phone even tighter. I really can't describe the emotions I felt at that moment, but it was some combination of betrayal, heartbreak, and pure, undiluted pain. Yet, I kept reading. I had to know everything, when it started, what they had done, when they had done it, and so on. My curiosity carried me all the way to the top of their conversation with each other, and everyone, all I can say is that I've never felt such deep pain before, ever. I put her phone back on the bedside table, removing any evidence that I was even there, but I remember standing in the dark of the room, and just staring at her. I won't lie, the hurt I felt in that moment drove me to some really messed up thoughts. As I looked at her, I must have stood there for five minutes, but in the end, I went back to my side of the bed, and stared at the ceiling. I didn't sleep a wink, and I just went over every single thing I had read over again. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest as I remembered, they at least twice, and they did it once in the back room of his workplace, so sleazy for a supposedly high class woman, and once in some kind of hotel or motel. There didn't seem to be much remorse, and there was mention of the next time. To be honest, it took the strength of Hercules to stop me from flipping out in the middle of the night. The thing is, I called in sick, after she left for work the morning after because I really couldn't concentrate in the state I was in. However, this is another day after, and I've called in sick again. I won't say that I'm completely alright, but I thin, K I've placed my anger to one side, and I'm focused on making her pay because how can you throw all of this away for a cheap fling? I'm not looking to do anything illegal, because she's not worth that anymore, but how do you guys think I can get back at her? I'm not going to cheat back because it literally won't fix anything. I need her to feel the kind of pain I'm feeling right now. Imagine the car I bought her as a gift being the reason why she eventually cheated on me. Like I said, if you've got advice, let me know what you think. I can barely think straight. Edit 1 Yes, it goes without saying that. I'm going to get divorced because I cannot stay with a cheat whether we've been married for 10 years or not. The guy looks young enough to be my kid, and something about that is just disgusting to me. Edit 2 No, I will not let it go. If I was going to, I wouldn't be here. No, again, I will not cheat back and throw it in her face. I want to hurt her in a more lasting way, and that's what I'm trying to figure out. I did see a suggestion about sabotaging her at work, and the truth is, that might work out if I can be patient. I don't know if I can, to be honest, but I'll try to wait for the right opportunity. Edit 3 So, everyone, I think I've come up with a perfect plan to get back at my wife. I'm sorry for taking so long to update you, but I think my patience will pay off for me, and all of you in the end. I will not divulge the details here but I think it'll be better to update you guys when I've carried out things. Ah, the trials and tribulations of marriage, huh? It's like the universe has a knack for throwing a wrench in our plans, no pun intended, just when we think everything's going smoothly. Who knew a shiny Audi could be the gateway drug to infidelity? They should put a warning label on those things, make us your spouse to seek out mechanics for more than just car trouble. But hey, at least now you know why she was so eager to get that room fixed, right? She wasn't just worried about the car looking sexy. She was making sure it was in tip-top shape for her extracurricular activities. And to think, you were just trying to be a good husband and surprise her with a nice gift. Talk about backfiring. Update 1 First off, I'm so sorry for making you all wait. But my goodness, it will be worth it. Trust me. I had to wait about 10 days before I could do anything. My wife has a very important business meeting that she has been preparing for. A tech company is about to move offices and she's the lead on closing a supply deal for her company. 
In a stroke of genius, if I do say so myself, I figured out the perfect way to get back at her. Poetic justice, but we'll get to that soon. She has spent a lot of time fretting about this big deal. She needs to close, and I eventually got involved in helping her prepare for it. I was there, playing the role of the tech company's rep, asking questions, giving her tips, and so on. Tonight is the night before the meeting, and there was a lot of intense preparation, and she feels very confident. She thanked me so much, and I was so irritated each time she repeated it, but I had to force a smile through it all. Just so you know, I checked her phone again a few days ago, and yes, they met up another time. I needed that to refuel me, because I was already starting to wonder whether I was doing too much. Anyway, I shoot her off to sleep because a good night's rest is essential for big meetings. Once I heard her soft snoring, I knew it was time for me to move. I went straight to the garage and towards her car, popping open the driver's side door. In case you don't know, the battery for the Q8 is under the driver's floorboard, but I know this, and I went straight for it, disconnecting the terminals. Besides that, I put everything right back the way I found it, and attempted to start the vehicle, risky, I know, but our garage is insulated well enough to absorb most of the sound. When it didn't make a sound, I knew I was good to go. I wasn't done yet though. Oh no, next up, I went to my own car and deflated one tire by a lot. It was clear to me that once she couldn't get her car started, she'd beg to take mine, because of how important her meeting was. I could Uber to work or something, after all. Like I said, she sleeps heavily, and I pretty much always wake up before her. So, I grabbed her phone from her bedside table and turned off the alarm she has for 6.30. I know that I will probably sleep like a baby tonight, even with my cheating hoe beside me. I feel like Dr. Frankenstein, waiting to watch this creation come to life. I'm sitting in bed right now, bubbling with excitement, and I decided to let you guys know what I'm planning. Just wish me luck that everything goes according to plan. Here's my next update. Update 2 Hello, everyone, do I have some amazing news for you all. As expected, I woke up before her at 6.45, and I turned her alarm back on. Her meeting was scheduled for 8 a.m., and I eventually woke her up at 7.10 with a fake panic in my voice. Honey, wake up. Wake up, your alarm didn't go off. She ran straight to the bathroom, and I heard the tap go on right away. Yep, during that time, I was looking for ways I could delay her even further. That's how invested I was in her downfall at this point. Because I've never been a bad-looking dude, and I could have slept with countless girls over the years, but I didn't, because I thought marriage meant something. Apparently not. It was 7.55 by the time my wife had brushed her teeth, showered, picked out an outfit, done her makeup, and had a quick cup of coffee. No, I didn't start the machine for her like I usually do. I heard her get into her car in the garage and close the door, and I waited to hear if the car would magically turn on. But of course, it didn't. She shouted from the garage after about two minutes, and I walked over to where she was. What's up with your car? I put on my best concerned look. Pop the hood, let me take a quick look for you. She did just that, and I looked around, checked the oil, tapped a few things, and asked her to try again. I did this for another five minutes. My aimless actions changed nothing, of course. Maybe it's the battery, I said. It's not even attempting to turn on, so probably the battery, but I can't figure out where it is in the engine bay. She was barely listening to me because she was fretting. I thought I could see her eyes watering. She knew what was on the line, and I felt like the greatest sense of schadenfreude any man has ever felt in that moment. It took her a while, it was 8.15 before she said, let me take your car. She ran inside to get my key, before I could even respond in the affirmative. It would take her about 20 minutes to get to work. Now, since she had beaten the work time rush, as she ran out, I had to shout, wait. I have a flat, hold on, she looked like she was going to rip her hair out. 
She rushed to my trunk and brought out the portable pump I use, setting it up herself. It took a few minutes before it was fully inflated. She packed up the pump, tossed it in the back seat, and got into the car. I was hoping to drag things out a bit more, but she had taken care of things herself. My job was done, and I watched as she drove off a bit too fast. At that moment, I did hope she wouldn't get into an accident, but that was where my concern ended. I went back inside and logged into my work from my laptop. I knew it was going to be a waiting game at that point, and I had things to do. I decided to make it a remote work day, since I could use my wife taking my car as an excuse. My bosses loved me, so that wasn't too much of an ask from them. It felt like forever though. I kept trying to keep my mind off, whether my revenge plot was working the way I wanted it to, but it was hard. It was so hard to concentrate, but I did my best. In that time, I decided to plug her battery back in to cover my tracks. Then, almost two hours later, I heard my car pull into the garage. I had to remind myself to put on my game face as she entered. I beamed and said, I know you just crushed it. You're a superstar, but I could see, she had been crying. Don't smile, don't smile, I had to keep telling myself that, and every time I felt a drop of sympathy trickling in, I reminded myself that, she had let this guy climb on top of her more than once. She had no remorse, neither could I, what's wrong, honey? As I said that, she burst into tears. She was mostly unintelligible through all the snot and tears, but I got the gist of what she said. My friends, listen up, the best case scenario, it worked. Everything worked the way I wanted it to. She got to work way late, and the lady she was always complaining about at work had to take the mantle. My genius didn't predict this outcome, of course, but it was commended for stepping up despite the pressure. Unsurprisingly, the entire presentation was a train wreck, all because my wife let them down on the most important of days. The biggest potential account the company could have had went down the toilet like a turd, and it was all my wife's fault. Yep, she was let go as soon as the tech company's reps stepped out of the building. For someone who had worked for them for a long time. Well, that was harsh, but so was losing the company millions of dollars. She told me through sniffling and wailing that people were whispering and snarling at her as she walked out of the office, the most embarrassing kind of termination. She had let down the entire company, all because of that stupid car. I'll have to give the mechanic a piece of my mind, because it seems he must have done a pretty crappy job the last time he took the car to him. This is all his fault. I noticed that her sniffling quieted down and I could almost hear her brain processing whether her darling Jim, her sin, was the direct reason why this happened. I kept going. Man, that mechanic. The entire thing was because of him. This was a little hint for her, but I didn't really care whether she caught it or not. She spent the night drinking, and I told her I had a headache, so I went upstairs to sleep. I wasn't sleeping, though. I was making arrangements with my lawyer to get the papers for divorce ready. I had to put up with her whining for a few more days, before I served her. I will never forget her face at that moment though. At my lowest moment, there were tears streaming down her cheeks, she was hysterical. Why would you do this to me now? What did I do to you to deserve this? I don't know, but maybe you can ask your sweet Jimmy boy. I'm sure he'll have an answer for you. Tell her to check out your car while he's at it. Can't have you losing your job again, now can we? I've never seen her look so shocked. She looked like a deer caught in headlights, and she was literally speechless. I couldn't help it, and I actually laughed in her face right there. I was sick and tired of her at this point. Pack up your things, and find somewhere else to go. I'll give you some hours. From there, I took off. I drove around town, trying to make sense of my emotions. I'll admit there was a blend of sadness, joy, relief, and pain, but there was definitely no regret. By the time I got back, it was dark, and she was gone. It's been two weeks since then, and she hasn't come back. 
My emotions were very complex, otherwise I would have updated all of you earlier. But things are over. There are no kids to worry about, and I already told her parents everything, so I know they won't come to join her to grovel. I feel good, though, like a cancer has been cut out of my life. It took some healthy flesh with it, but it is honestly for the better. I'm not too old, so I have a lot of life ahead of me. About Jim, I considered finding a way to punish him for his role in all this, but he's pretty much just a kid, and my wife was the cougar in this situation. I think I'll let him off the hook, but I might change my mind. If I do, I'll let you guys know. Thank you all for joining us today on Silent Affairs. Be sure to like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next video.